Even if you're not a Costco member, you've no doubt heard about Costco's rotisserie chicken. Here's everything you need to know about them, from what's really in them, to how they stack up to the competition, to what to do with it once you get home. The ingredient list for a Costco rotisserie chicken is actually pretty simple. A whole chicken, water, and seasonings including salt, sodium phosphate, modified food starch, potato dextrin, carrageenan, sugar, dextrose, and spice extractives. These are pre-seasoned in factories. They arrive at the supermarket mm. so that an employee can put on the skewer and cook it. Some of those chemical-sounding words might seem unusual, but there's nothing too terribly scary here. Sodium phosphate is an additive that helps keep meats moist and maintains freshness. Modified food starch is an additive typically used for thickening, stabilizing, or emulsifying. Potato dextrin is a thickener and a sweetener, but can also be used to enhance crispness in foods. Dextrose is a simple sugar made from corn. Carrageenan, a preservative made from seaweed that, in chicken, helps to retain water, is probably the most controversial ingredient here. Though it's FDA-approved, there is some evidence to suggest that it triggers negative health effects in some. For the most part, it seems these additives ensure maximum tenderness and provide that always-winning combo of salty and sweet goodness. Most likely, you probably eat plenty of foods with way scarier labels that don't taste anywhere near as good. Costco's rotisserie chicken is missing something that's typically pretty common among other grocery store rotisserie chickens, monosodium glutamate, or MSG. Although MSG tends to get a bad rap, there's no doubt that it makes food taste amazing with all its flavor-enhancing abilities. But that's neither here nor there because Costco's chicken just doesn't need it to taste amazing. Another thing you don't have to worry about with Costco's rotisserie chicken? Gluten. A company representative confirmed that the chickens are gluten-free, which is not always the case with grocery store rotisserie chickens. If there's one knock on any brand of rotisserie chicken, it's the high sodium content. There's a lot of salt in a rotisserie chicken. There's probably more salt than you would use if you were roasting a chicken at home. Costco's comes packed with its fair share, but it's certainly not the worst. Nutritionist Bonnie Tobdix told Today that a three-ounce serving of rotisserie chicken can have as much as 600 milligrams of sodium. The same serving size of Costco's rotisserie chicken comes in at 460 milligrams. A Sam's Club rotisserie chicken has around 550 milligrams for a three-ounce serving. Some chickens have less sodium, though. Publix's, for example, has around 250 milligrams per three-ounce serving. And let's be clear, none of these rotisserie chickens come close to the sodium level of a fast food burger. A McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese has 1,310 milligrams of sodium. A Wendy's Baconator has 1,630 milligrams. According to the FDA, the recommended daily value of sodium is less than 2,300 milligrams. So you can have five servings of Costco's rotisserie chicken or one Baconator. And as long as we're talking nutrition, here's what else you get with that three ounce serving of Costco rotisserie chicken. 140 calories, seven grams of fat, and 19 grams of protein. The big appeal of Costco is great deals on supersized products, like that giant stuffed bear they sell. And you should expect no less with Costco's rotisserie chicken. For the bargain basement cost of $4.99, you get a monster of a bird whose price and weight beat the pants off competitors' offerings. Coming in at a weight of at least three pounds after cooking, Costco's rotisserie chicken dwarfs those sold by other stores. According to the Wall Street Journal, a one and a half to two pound bird is what you'll typically find elsewhere, and you could pay $7 or more for it. You don't need to be a math whiz to see that paying $5 for a three pound chicken is better than paying $7 for a two pounder. Not only is it a steal for its size, but Costco typically ranks number one in rotisserie chicken taste tests, which is unsurprising if you've ever tried one. Whether it goes up against Sam's Club, Walmart, Kroger, or Whole Foods, Costco is tops. Even knowing the value proposition, you still want to pick the best, freshest bird from what's available. And once you know what to look for, it's easy. Bon Appetit senior food editor Rick Martinez says that picking the heaviest bird also means picking the freshest, because a heavier chicken indicates that its juices haven't yet evaporated under the heat lamps. Martinez explains, You'll feel a noticeable difference between the birds that just came out of the oven and ones that have been sitting there all day. The skin also tells a tale. You want evenly browned and taut skin because, Martinez says, as the juices leave the meat, the chicken's skin begins to shrivel and becomes discolored. A former Costco meat department manager shared another useful tip on Reddit, advising, look for ones that touch the top of the lid. They weigh the most. 
Also, be sure to grab your Costco rotisserie chicken at the end of your shopping trip. It's easy to get lost in the maze of aisles, and for safety's sake, the USDA recommends that cooked food be refrigerated within two hours to prevent bacteria growth. One downside to be aware of if you've never tried a Costco rotisserie chicken before, the skin will almost certainly not be crispy. After it's roasted to a tender perfection, that rotisserie chicken gets placed into its plastic container, waiting to go home with you. By the time it makes its journey to your kitchen, that skin is more soggy than crisp. But don't worry, it's still utterly delicious, and you will definitely have to restrain yourself from stripping each and every last bit of salty brown skin off in one sitting. It's just not crispy. Costco's rotisserie chickens are a well-known loss leader. If you're not familiar with the term, Costco is willing to sell those chickens at $4.99, even if they're not making any money on them. Because chances are, anyone who makes the trip to Costco to buy one is going to buy other stuff too. Chickens are a lure to get customers in the door. They're placed strategically at the back of every Costco, so customers might pick up other items along the way. How often do you run in, grab a hot rotisserie chicken, and beeline it to the registers without grabbing anything else? Nine times out of ten, you're leaving Costco with a whole lot more than that $4.99 rotisserie chicken and a whole lot less money in your wallet. Costco might be willing to sell you a delicious chicken for under $5, but it's certainly not doing it for philanthropic reasons. As with many grocery store offerings, Costco's rotisserie chickens come packaged in a plastic clamshell. And that seems like a fairly logical and inexpensive way to get that steaming hot chicken from the warehouse store to your kitchen, right? But it turns out there is another option that uses a lot less plastic. In May 2019, the takeout reported that Whole Foods would begin selling its rotisserie chickens in bags rather than hard plastic clamshells, a move the company says that, along with other packaging changes, will reduce an estimated 800,000 pounds of plastic waste per year. Wegmans had already made the change for its rotisserie chickens and claims to use 75% less plastic than the standard domes. With 64 million Costco rotisserie chickens sold each year, you can imagine how much plastic waste all those clamshells add up to, because they're not recyclable everywhere. Something to think about next time you pick up a Costco bird. According to deal-seeking Redditors, at some Costco locations, unsold rotisserie chickens are chilled and repurposed into packs of eight-leg quarters, which include the thigh and the drumstick for $4.99, the same price as a whole chicken. Yes, you're not getting the two breasts or the two tiny wings, but the six additional thighs and drumsticks are certain to more than make up for that. In the No Redditors advise that certain times are better than others to score this deal, saying that early mornings are best, particularly Tuesday through Friday. The chickens have a greater chance of selling out on the weekends, meaning there won't be any leftovers to be sold. Want to get the most meat off your Costco rotisserie chicken? According to Rachel Ray Every Day, it's all about that wishbone, baby. The wishbone is good for making more than wishes once you've carved your bird. Pulling it out before you start to carve is the key to success. The publication describes the simple three-step process, saying, Feel for the Y-shaped wishbone between the neck and the breast. Make a small cut behind the bone, and then use your fingers to loosen it from the flesh. Run your fingers along the backbone and under the breast meat to remove the breast in one piece. That's it! You'll save time and spare yourself the aggravation of wrestling with the carcass to get every last scrap of breast meat off. Winner winner, as it were. Stock recipes typically call for the bones and scraps left over after breaking down raw chicken. But if you're not using the carcass from your Costco rotisserie chicken to make your stock, you're missing out. According to Bon Appetit, when you use the bones from an already roasted bird, you'll actually be left with a darker stock than from raw chicken, which ultimately means more flavor will be added to whatever dish you add the stock to. The process for making stock with pre-cooked rotisserie chicken is the same as using raw chicken parts. Just add water, vegetables, and aromatics, like garlic, then simmer for an hour or more and strain. While spending the time to make stock from a convenience item like rotisserie chicken might seem like a lot of work, Think about it this way. You just paid $4.99 for that bird, which is a steal to begin with, and now for a few pennies worth of veggies, you're also getting a pot of rich, dark stock. Isn't that worth the trouble? Say you want to make a recipe, a pot pie or some fried rice, perhaps, with your Costco chicken. But your recipe calls for a certain amount of meat, and you have no idea how much a rotisserie chicken will actually yield. Well, don't worry, it's a lot. 
According to Betty Crocker, the average rotisserie chicken is about two pounds and will yield three cups of meat, two cups white, one cup dark. That translates to about one pound of meat and a pound of scraps. But Costco's rotisserie chickens are substantially larger than the average bird. So how much can you expect from them? Food blogger Judy Wright broke down two Costco chickens and got more than seven and a half cups from them. That's a whopping five pounds total, or about two and a half pounds from each. That's a lot more than your standard rotisserie chicken and should be plenty for whatever recipe you've got in mind. Have a blue taste of chicken. Just a bit. Just a taste. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Mmm. Delicious, right? There's no worse sin than taking a perfectly cooked rotisserie chicken, bringing it home, sticking it in the refrigerator until dinner time, and then completely ruining it when you reheat it. All that beautifully tender meat gets turned into chicken-flavored shoe leather after a couple minutes in the microwave. But take comfort, there is a way to successfully reheat your Costco rotisserie chicken without rendering it inedible. According to Alana Karp, head chef and culinary co-founder at Plated, you've got to use the oven for best results. And the key is adding some liquid to the situation. Grab a high-sided baking dish, plop your rotisserie chicken inside, and pour about a quarter of an inch of chicken stock or broth into the dish. Reheat the chicken at 400 degrees until the stock is bubbling and the chicken is warmed through. Carp promises that the liquid will ensure a moist, reheated bird. It takes a little more time, but you'll be glad you exercised a little patience rather than trying to choke down a dried-out, microwaved mess. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!